This is a, we'll sing one beautiful bhajan in glorification of Sri Nityananda Ram. It's called Manashiksha. It's called Teachings to the Mind. And it's from Parthana by Naratam Das Thakur. And Srila Prabhupada gives a very lengthy purport on this bhajan. And we'll read a little bit of that also. It's a little difficult melody, but I'll try. You should learn it. You can learn this one. Yeah, and then you can sing it, yeah. It's a beautiful song. So, yeah. Are you ready? Well, we can put it up on the board and we'll begin. There's two different melodies. I just know one of them. The other one is a little more deeper and slower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is more or less um, kind of dancing melody. <laughs> but we'll try. Okay. Mr. Mr. Screen is, he's, uh, he's the unmanifested <laughs> effulgence. Okay, you got it? This might take a long time. You got your song books there? Yeah, 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 okay. We'll start. Nittai Pada Kamala Koti Chandra Sushita Nithai Pada Kamala Koti Chandra Sushita Lai Ah. 
हाहाकारमक हो नित्य पर पसरी हा सत्ये रे सत्य खोरी मानी नित्य कोरुण हे ब्रजे राधा कृष्ण पाभे धारण थे झरण दुखिया नित्य चरण सत्य थेर सेवा का निध्या नित्य पद सार खोरो आसा धारो बार दौरो दुखी नित्य मोर खोरो सुखी धारो थम बारो दुखी राख रंग झरण भाषा नित्य पार कमला खोती चंद्र सुशीता छाया झाग झूर हा छाया झाग था हा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम हम राम राम हरे हम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम हम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे हे हेम हरे हम हरे हम हे हम हम हरे हम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हम कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे हे हरे हम हरे राम हम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे नारो थम बड़ो दुखी नित्य मोर घोर सुखी नित्य मोर घोर सुखी 
Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. This is a very nice song by Naratam Das Thakur. He advises that Nittai Pada, the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, Kamala means lotus and Pada means feet, are the shelter where one will get soothing moonlight not only from one but millions of moons. Just We can just imagine the aggregate total value of soothing shine from millions of moons. In this material world, Jagat, which is progressing towards hell, there is always a blazing fire, and everyone is struggling hard without finding peace. Therefore, if the world wants to have real peace, it should take shelter under the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, which are cooling like the shining of millions of moons. Judai means relief. If one actually wants relief from the struggle of existence, and actually wants to extinguish the blazing fire of material pangs, Naratam Das Thakur advises, please take shelter of Lord Nityananda. What will be the result of accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda? He says, Heno Nittai Bini Bhai, unless one takes shelter of the shade of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, Radha Krishna Patinai, it will be very difficult for him to approach Radha Krishna. The aim of this Krishna conscious movement is to enable us to approach Radha Krishna and associate with the Supreme Lord in his sublime pleasure dance. Naratam Das advises that if one actually wants to enter into the dancing party of Radha and Krishna, he must accept the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Then he says, Say Sambandha Nahi. Sambandha means connection or contact. Anyone who has not contacted a relationship with Nityananda is understood to have spoiled his human birth. In another song, Nartam Das Thakur says, Hari Hari Vipule Jonama Goenu. Anyone who does not approach Radha Krishna through the relationship with Nityananda has uselessly spoiled his life. Brita means useless, Janma means life, Tara means his, and Sambandha means relationship. Anyone who does not have a relationship with Lord Nityananda is simply spoiling the boon of his human form of life. Why is he spoiling? Say he pasu, bada duda cha. Say means that, pasu means animal, and duda cha means misbehaved or most misbehaved. Without elevation to Krishna consciousness through the mercy of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, life is simply spoiled in the animal propensities of sense gratification. Naratam Das says that ordinary animals can be tamed, but when a human being is animalistic, having only animal propensities, he is most horrible, for he cannot be tamed. Ordinary cats and dogs, or even a tiger can be tamed, when a human being goes out of his way and neglects to take his human activity of Krishna consciousness, his higher intelligence will simply be used for animal propensities and is very difficult to tame him. The enactment of state laws cannot make a thief an honest man because his heart is polluted. He cannot be tamed. Every man sees that a person who commits criminal offenses is punished by the government. And also in scriptural injunctions, punishment in hell is mentioned. But despite hearing from scripture and seeing the actions of state laws, the demoniac cannot be tamed. What are they doing? Nitaina bolilo muke. Since they do not know who Nityananda is, they never say the name of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. Majilo samsara suke. Majilo means becoming absorbed. They become absorbed in so-called material enjoyment. They don't care who Lord Chaitanya or Lord Nityananda are, and therefore they go deep into the material existence. Vidya kule kikori vetar. If one has no connection with Nityananda, if he does not come to Krishna consciousness, his vidya or so-called academic education 
and Kula, birth in a high family or great na nation, will not protect him. Regardless of whether one is born in a very big family or nation, or has a very advanced academic education, at the time of death, nature's law will act, his work will be finished, and he will get another body according to that work. Why are these human animals acting in this way? Ahankar matahoi nitaipada pasariya. They have become maddened by a false conception of bodily life, and thus they have forgotten their internal relationship with Nityananda. Asatyere satya korimani. Such forgetful persons actual accept the illusionary energy as factual. Asatyera refers to that which is not a fact, or in other words, maya. Maya means that which has no existence, but is a temporary illusion only. Persons who have no contact with Nityananda accept this illusional, illusory body as factual. Naratam Dasta Kordan says, Nitayer Koruna Habe, Braje Radha Krishna Pabe. If you actually want to approach the association of Radha and Krishna, you must achieve the mercy of Nityananda first. When he is merciful towards you, then you will be able to approach Radha and Krishna. Dada Nittai Charana Dukhyani. Naratam Das Thakur advised that one firmly catch hold of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Then again he says, Nittai Charana Satya. One should not mistake and think that he has caught hold of Maya. Similarly, the lotus feet of Nityananda may also be something like that of Maya, or illusion. Therefore, Naratam Das Thakur confirms Nittai Charana Satya. The lotus feet of Nityananda are not illusion, they are a fact. Tahara Sevaka Nitta. And one who engages in the transcendental loving service of Nityananda is also transcendental. If one engages in the transcendental loving service of Nityananda in Krishna consciousness, he immediately achieves his transcendental position on the spiritual platform, which is eternal and blissful. Therefore he advises, Nittaipada Sadakoda As, anyone always try to catch the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, Naratam Bododuke. Naratam Dastakor, the Acharya, is taking the position that he is very unhappy. Actually, he is representing ourselves. He says, My dear Lord, I am very unhappy. Nittai Moda Koda Suki. Therefore I am praying to Lord Nityananda to make me happy. Rango Raho Ranga Charana Pas. Please give keep me in the corner of your lotus feet. The Prabhupada's purport. Omagyan Timiranda Sya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksun Melitamyana Tas my Sri Gurubana Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapti Tamyana Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kidam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Pacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nitai Moros Koro Suke Please make me happy Nitai <laughs> So one of the key words in this, or key principles, is that Lord Nityananda's lotus feet are not like the illusionary dance of the material energy or maya. They are actual factual. So one who seriously wants to find the happiness in devotional service must take shelter of Lord Nityananda. He is the, he is the original spiritual master wherein all other spiritual masters come from. Uh, uh, Brajendra Nandana Ye, Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai. Krishna and Balaram, the two transcendental brothers in Sri Vrindavan Dham, always playing their transcendental games with their friends 
in the eternal bowl of the spiritual world manifest these same pastimes in the material world. And then they come to give further mercy by again reincarnating in this age of Kali in such magnanimous and most merciful manifestations of their appearance, Gornitai. <laughs> Taylor Prabhupada would always say, try to understand the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And he said, no matter what is your qualifications, you will never be able to understand their mercy. And they have r r resurrected some of the lowest of the low and brought them to the position of devotees in Krishna consciousness. We have the example of Jagai and Madai who are drunkards. They had all bad qualities and they committed practically every sin that was ever possible. The recordings of of Yamaraj, who keeps recording the records of the sinful activities in the material world, they could not even keep the records of Jagai and Madai. In fact, they were hiring more and more persons to do the scribing of their, their sinful activities and they were running out of paper. <laughs> And they were running out of people to do the work. And at one point when Yamaraj was hearing about this mercy that Lord Nityananda had bestowed upon Jagai and Mudai, he asked his scribes, please tell me a little bit about him. And he said, we can't because we are 30, we're at least 30 days behind in calculating their sinful activities. It's not possible. But if you give us time, maybe in a few years we'll catch up. <laughs> We need to hire some more scribes. So the, their, their sinful activities were monumental. I'll give you an example of how sinful they were. <laughs> You're not going to like this, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Where uh, there was one girl, and she, was, uh, her, she had a father who was blind, and so she would go out begging for the blind father to get some foodstuffs for him. He had no way of making his own means. So he had a very nice daughter who would take him by the hand and they would go and beg. So one day, uh, Jagai and Mare saw what was happening. So they went over and uh, robbed the father and raped the girl. <laughs> I mean, that's really cruel. <laughs> I mean, here's a blind man with his daughter trying to make a living, and they just attacked the father, took the money, whatever they had got, gotten, and then violated the girl. Now, this is one of the many types of activities that Jagai and Mara used to do, and it was a whole long list of things. And so, but Lord Nityananda was told by Lord Chaitanya to go out and find the most sinful and give my mercy to that person. That's Lord Chaitanya. He likes to give the mercy to the people who are the most unqualified, just to so show how deep and how great his mercy is. And so Lord Nityananda was with Srila Haridas Thakur, and they would go out, and they would go from door to door begging people to chant Hare Krishna. And sometimes people would say, Oh, Nita, yes, very nice, thank you. We'll, we'll chant Hare Krishna. But sometimes they would say, oh, we have, we have our families, we have our, our agricultural fields, we have so many things to do, and we don't have any time to chant Hare Krishna. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> so they, they were, they, but sometimes Nittai would say, but please, please, Lord Chaitanya, the Supreme Lord himself is coming just to give this mercy of the, the doors to the spiritual world by chanting his holy name. Please chant Hare Krishna. And then they would see the Lord Nityananda. He would sometimes roll on the ground, put a straw in his teeth and beg them. And they would say, oh, Nittai, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up. Okay, okay, we'll chant, we'll chant, we'll chant. <laughs> They would get a little nervous because they see how humble he was and how, you know, free from any false sense of pride, he would simply beg them for their own benefit. So this went on. So one day they saw these two persons from a distance, Jagai and Madai. <laughs> We've done many plays. There's a nice one, nice play that we did in... Uh, in uh, 
what was it? In New Vrindavan many years ago. You can find it on the internet. Lord Chaitanya was, uh, was, uh, uh, who is it? That sannyasi, can't think of his name now. Indrajumna Maharaj, okay. He was Lord Chaitanya. Um, Radhana Swami was uh, Haridas Thakur. No, he was Lord Nityananda and I was Haridas Thakur. <laughs> you can see it, on the, it's on the video, it's just like that. And we had two of the, I don't know how to describe these guys, but they were devotees. <laughs> And they were they had many of the characteristics of Jagai and Made, so we we enrolled them in the drama. So. <laughs> and we played it and it's really quite funny when you watch the drama. It's, it's supposed to be serious, but it turned out to be a little hilarious <laughs> the way we carried it out. Anyway, so the devotees have done that and play many times. But in the actual scene itself, Lord Nityananda, he inquires from the townspeople, who are they? Oh, they're the constables, the sheriffs, but they're the most sinful, and they're always drunk on strong liquors. Better not to go near them. They're always drunk, and they're always in the mood of fighting. But Lord Nityananda, from a distance, <clears throat> uh, he said... He called out, hey, you two brothers, Lord Chaitanya, the Supreme Lord has come with the mercy in this age. He's asking everyone to, to become benefited by simply chanting Hare Krishna. And then Jagaya Mari, after they were like, oh, who's this guy? What is he talking about? So they, they were usually drinking and punching each other. That's how they would, you know, <laughs> good friends, you know, <laughs> brothers. So they started, you know, growling. And then uh, one of them said, Get him! Get him! So they start chasing after Lord Nityananda and Haridas. And they start running. They ran away. <laughs> and they were running and running. And, uh, and Nityananda was, was laughing. And Haridas Dakar was saying to Nityananda, I got beaten in 22 marketplaces. And somehow I survived. But now I'm with you. And you're a madman. I don't know how I'll be able to survive this situation. <laughs> and so they were running and laughing. And then they got away. And they came back to Lord Nitya Chaitanya that night and gave their dead Sankirtan scores. <laughs> so they went out again the next day. And there they said two persons were there in the same spot, again doing the same thing, intoxicated. And this time Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur were really determined, at least Nityananda was, to give them the mercy. So he came a little closer this time. And again he called out, encouraging them to chant the Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra. And then Madai, he, there was a broken pot that was laying on the ground, so he took a piece of that pot and threw it. And he was quite good at aiming. And he hit Lord Nityananda in the head, and his head started to bleed. My God, when everyone saw that, Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. When everyone saw that, they were in anxiety, so they ran to call Lord Chaitanya. And he came, and he was like, he was like Yamaraj at the time. No, he's like Lord Shiva at the time of destruction. <laughs> And he came, and Lord, well, Lord Chaitanya was really angry, and he called for a Shudashan chakra, and he was about to kill both of these brothers, but Madai, not Madai, but Jagai, ran and fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and started begging for forgiveness. When they saw him in his mood of death personified, they all became, they become completely frightened. And... And then uh, Lord Nityananda said to Lord Chaitanya, you know, my dear Lord, in this age, if we kill those who are, you know, sinful and demoniac, we'd have to kill everybody. <laughs> That's Kali Yuga. <laughs> There'd be nobody left. <laughs> so, but we have come to kill not the body, but to kill the de demonic mentality. And so Lord Chaitanya became a little pacified hearing Lord Nityananda and at the same time being begged by Jagai. 
So the Lord became... And then what happened was a very, most amazing situation that uh, Madai, he realized, oh my God, the Lord is so merciful. So he ran and fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda and started begging forgiveness. He was practically on the verge of tears. Some say he was actually crying. He was feeling so bad that he had caused harm to Lord Nityananda. But Lord Nityananda would, didn't, it didn't slight him in the in the, in the least, because he is so merciful. He'll take you know a beating from Jagai and Marai, Akroda Nityananda, Akroda da Paramananda Nityananda. Ra. He doesn't get angry. Kroda means anger, but Akroda, he is very kind. He's very merciful, even when he is. He is vilified or beaten or criticized. He remains free from anger. But that, if that was the same Balaram, when Balaram, if you would have did that to Balaram, that would have been the last thing you did. <laughs> so that same Balaram came as Lord Nityananda, but he's carrying this extra manifestation of mercy in this age. And of course, right after that, then when Lord Chaitanya saw how Lord Nityananda had forgave Jagai and Madai, Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya did something. And all of the sinful activities of Jagai and Madai that were there within them, they all came into the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful golden form became blackish. And the Dvaitacharya was there and he said, My dear Lord, you look like Krishna. <laughs> and so all of that sinful activity, and then later on it's explained by the, by the commentaries on this uh, particular pastime, that anyone who offends Vaishnavas, uh, those sinful activities of Jagai Marai will go to them. <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya is ready to release them for those who are offensive to against Vaishnavas. And we should be very, very uh, careful and very, very, what we say, humble in the association of Vaishnavas. It's because uh, to commit offense means to disturb the, the whole activity of devotional service. So, and then... Um, Jagai and Mari were actually freed from that and they actually became great devotees. When Lord Chaitanya had his little Sangha that night, Jagai and Mari also came. They were invited to come. And the devotees who were with Lord saw these two rascals, <laughs> Takoids, and they became a little nervous. But Lord Chaitanya said, No, no, you should not see them the way they were. They are now devotees of Krishna. You should see them in, in that way. And they were so humble and so freed. All of their sinful actions were taken and they were given supreme mercy by Lord Nityananda and then eventually Lord Chaitanya gave mercy also. And right after that, um, Lord Nid, uh, I mean, but I couldn't stop crying. He was constantly crying, thinking how he had offended Lord Nityananda. His heart was so broken, he had become, his heart had become softened by the mercy of the Lord. And now it was broken, thinking what he had done to Lord Nityananda. So he was always praying to Lord Nityananda to do, to somehow or other, some service I could do to somehow, just in some small way, you know, worship you. Lord Nityananda said, you go down by the Ganga, and people every day, they come and they bathe in the Ganga, but there's a place where you should make a ghat there, and then that will be a place where people can also, after they're bathing the Ganga, they can wash off in the ghat, or in other words, it always will be useful for bathers. And uh, so he did. But when people saw that same Madai making a god, digging a hole, he was digging holes and making this god, they said, oh, there's that rascal Madai. So they took a rock 
and they would throw it at him and it would hit him. He would, and he would pick up the rock and he would walk back to the person and say, here, throw it again. <laughs> My God. You could imagine how merciful Lord Nityananda was that it changed them in such a way that they were completely different. They were practically on the level of saints. And it's interesting because um, I think it's Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is the one that gives a nice commentary on this particular pastime. And he says something really, what we say, um, relevant to all of us. He says that the activities of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda in showing mercy to Jagaya Marai are not a pastime that you find in the scriptures. And then he goes on, they're not simply a historical event in time. What, I, what are they? They're the feature of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's mercy that is going on today. <laughs> in other words, the Jagais and Madais of the Kali Yuga are now coming to Krishna consciousness because of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Because it says no one, no one can approach Radha and Krishna in this age. It's not possible. No one has any of the, even some of the, even the few of the qualifications to approach that realm of devotion. But by the mercy of Nityananda and Chaitanya, they have made it easy. They have broken open the storehouse of love of God and made the process of devotional service so wonderful that anyone, no matter what their background in life is, no matter how sinful they had have been, no matter how much they have even been against the devotees, if they somehow or other receive a little bit of mercy, then if they change in their activities, they can be seen as uh, devotees. Mm -hmm. This is the mercy of Sri, uh, Sri Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. It's not possible to understand that mercy. All we can do is describe some of the activities that circle around or center around that mercy. They are so kind, so kind. When Srila Prabhupada came to uh, um, Atlanta, Georgia temple, in that particular temple there are deities of uh, Gornitai in the center altar. There are three altars. And on the left side uh, is uh, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. In the middle is Gornitai. And when I was there, there was nothing on the right, but now there is Radha and Krishna. So now they have Radha and Krishna is on the right altar, Jagannath on the left, and Gornitai is in the middle. And Prabhupada came and he sat down. The, the temple was packed. Devotees had come from all over the USA to see Srila Prabhupada. They had taken flights from many of these cities around. Where were you at that time? Were you there? Was That was in the March of ni the beginning of March 1975. Did you go? No, I was going to ride a You were in a Radha Damodar party. Radha Damodar went Okay, yeah, the book distribution was going on, but some book distributors came anyway. <laughs> yeah. I was in New Vrindavan, and most of the New Vrindavan devotees go, went, but I couldn't go because I was the cook, and cooks are not easily replaceable. <laughs> so, no, I was, the, I was the head cook, but I was the only cook at the same time, so... <laughs> I decided, to, I decided since I was the only cook, I should be the head cook. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're going to be the only one. <laughs> yeah, and most of the time my assistants wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> that was my mind. <laughs> but I couldn't go, and I was, in, I was miserable because of that. <laughs> But the devotees describe, and Prabhupada, you can hear it on the tape, when Prabhupada sat down to begin his opening lecture, he starts to speak about Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya and describing how merciful they are. And at one time, 
in his own uh, absorption and speaking of their mercy, he starts to become emotional, really emotional. And then he stops. <clears throat> and then he closes his eyes, and devotees could see there were tears coming out of Prabhupada's eyes. And the whole place went silent. It was like, the, we use that uh, statement, you could hear a pin drop, it was so quiet. And it seemed like forever, but it was only a, maybe a minute, not even a minute, and Prabhupada went into this ecstasy, just meditating on Gornitai's mercy. And then when Prabhupada, and after some time, he, everyone was waiting what was going to happen next. Uh, and Prabhupada opened his eyes and he said, just have kirtan. <laughs> Couldn't speak. And he wasn't able to continue speaking. He was, his emotions were too strong. So Prabhupada helped us to understand how, how deep is the, is the uh, mercy of Gornitai, how they have picked up even the lowest of the low and given them an opportunity to make their life uh, you know, successful by engaging them in devotional service. So I'll speak a little bit about uh, the advent of Lord Nityananda, just briefly. I'll just summarize his appearance in this world. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in, in 1486, but Lord Nityananda appeared in 1474. So he appeared 12 years before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a place that is in an area which is the providence called Radha Desh, and it's in a, it is known as Eka Chakra. It's also called, um, what is that? Lord Nityananda's son, what's his name? Birabhadra. Birabhadrapur, thank you. Birabhadrapur is another name for Echo Chakra. And it's a very remote and very, what we say, simple village. When the devotees found that particular village, uh, we used to go there and there was nothing there, but now they have built a temple and there's guest houses there now. But uh, it's a very simple village and Lord Nityananda appeared there. And as he was growing up, he became the sinosaur, he became the focus of everyone in the village, even those parents who had their own sons, they, they were very attracted to Lord Nityananda. He was, his father's name was Hadai Pandit, and his mother's name was Vegavati. Was it Vegavati? No. Huh? Par uh, pa Prabhav? Padmavati. Padmavati, thank you. Padmavati, yeah. There's a place there called Padmavati Kund, Kund where devotees take bath there. So when Lord Nityananda grew up there, he would like to play with his friends, but they wouldn't play just any old game. They would play pastimes from the scriptures. And Lord Nityananda would teach his friends these different pastimes from the scriptures. And then he would give them different parts and they would play some dramatic act and they would play the actual pastime. So this would go on and sometimes some of the elders would, would be amazed. Nittai, how do you know all these things? And he would say, well, these are my pastimes. <laughs> but they couldn't get it, you know. <laughs> they couldn't get it. He said, yeah, these are my pastimes. And so one time they were playing the pastime where, where Lakshman and gets shot by the javelin of uh, Indrajit and he falls to the ground unconscious. So Lord Nityananda, he's playing Lakshman. So he has one boy playing Indrajit and the javelin is a flower. <laughs> so the boy throws the flower at Lord Nityananda and it hits him and he falls to the ground. Now, the next thing that's supposed to happen is supposed to be that, uh, you know, Hanuman comes and he's, you know, he's asked to go to get that herb from the, the mountain in the Himalayas to bring that herb back and revive 
Lakshman. But when Lord Nityananda fell unconscious after being hit with a flower, <laughs> he didn't move. <laughs> he stayed there. It was like, is he alive? And everybody started to wonder, what happened to Nidai? And then they went over and they couldn't find any life signs. It seemed like he was dead. <laughs> but he wasn't. And then some of the people were thinking, oh my God, we lost Nittai. What happened? And then people were crying. And finally, as this was going on, one of the boys in the drama said, oh, Hanuman, go get the herb. <laughs> go get the herb. So this boy who was playing Hanuman, he was jumping. And then he comes back with this plant. <laughs> And they give it to Lord Nityananda, and then he gets up. <laughs> and everybody said, oh, he's back. <laughs> so he would play these leelas so realistic that it was, it was like right from the scriptures. And he would teach his friends. So and this went on for many, and then he became so much loved by everyone in the village. One day, a particular sannyasi came Lord Nityananda was 12 years old at the time. And this particular, nobody knows who this sannyasi is. Some people say that it was, uh, it was uh, his, uh, Lord Chaitanya's older brother, what is it, Vishwarup. Yeah, some say it was Vishwarup. Others say it was Lakshmi Paritirtha. Um, but nobody really can say for sure who the sannyasi was. So he came to the village, and he happened to come to the house of Hadai Pandit. And Hadai welcomed, and he stayed there for three days. And Hadai served, along with Padmavati, they served him very nicely, washed his feet, or gave him nice prasadam, and made sure he had all the comforts. And after three days, he said, now it is time for me to leave. But before I leave, I have one request. And, of course, if a sannyasi gives you a request, you're not supposed to refuse that. Remember that. Write that down. <laughs> uh, they'll probably get cut out of the tape. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't refuse a sannyasi. <laughs> anyway. And so Hadai said, well, you are a guest. You can ask for me whatever you like, and I will do my best to fulfill your, your request. Well, I'm traveling, and I'm all by myself, and I have some much traveling to do. I require assistance. So please give me your son, Nittai. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was the worst thing. Hadai Pandit was shocked. He couldn't think of anything to say, but at the same time, he couldn't say no. <laughs> he was thinking what to do. And then he was like stunned. And then he didn't know what to do. And then he talked to Padmavati. And Padmavati, he said, well, you know, we, you can't say no to a sannyasi. <laughs> she wasn't happy, and Hadai was... And then Nittai, at the same time when that was happening, he ran right next to the sannyasi and stood next to him, just to give an indication, I'm going. <laughs> so <clears throat> the sannyasi and Nittai just turned around and left, and they were walking. Hadai Pandit was following, following, and he was following. At one point he couldn't follow anymore, and he stopped. And he stayed there. It said that he stayed there for three days and didn't move in that position. And he simply watched them leaving. When the news got out around the village that Nittai had been left with this sannyasi, all the villagers became really, really, let me say, lost, concerned. They all loved Nittai as much as his parents did. So some of them were went to try to find the sannyasi, but they couldn't find him anywhere. And some of them said, well, I'll take my son and I'll give my son to the sannyasi. We want Nittai back. But no one could find, and then they were gone. And Hadai Pandit stayed there for, I don't know, there's been different estimations how long he stood in that place. But he left his body right in that place. He couldn't move. He just stood in that place where he last saw his son, and that was the end of his life. But Bhavati carried on, but she was also in grief somehow. So, and then Nittai went with that sannyasi and traveled for 20 years. 
just like Balaram, after he left the battle of Kurukshetra, after Duryodhana and Bhima were fighting, he tried to stop the fight by ameliorating it, by telling them that, you know, neither one of you are going to win because you're both equal in different ways. But they didn't listen, and then Balaram left and he went on pilgrimage for 20 years. It's in the same way Lord Nityananda, who was Balaram himself, went on pilgrimage for 20 years, and then he, after 20 years, he came to the house of Nandanacharya in Navadvip Dham and stayed there. And then Lord Chaitanya one day said to his followers, a very special personality has come, and tomorrow we will find him. And then they said, well, who's that? He's my brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where is he? Well, he's not easy to find. We'll find him. Okay. So they went out, and everybody was looking everywhere, and came back and couldn't find him anywhere. Lord Chaitanya said the next day, he said, come with me. So he came to the house of Lord uh, of Nandanacharya, which is right down the road from our... our uh, if, you go, if you go out the gate and you go down the road, you come to the house of... Nandanacharya. It's a little ways down. <clears throat> and Lord Nityananda was there. And when Lord Chaitanya came, they, they met it, and it was like the meeting was so deep and so sweet and so full of love. And uh, that's described nicely by Vrindavan Das Thakur in, in Chaitanya Bhagwat. The details of that interchange are so intimate and so sweet. And uh, the next day, <clears throat> Uh, Lord Chaitanya was with all the devotees and Lord Nityananda was there and they were meeting Lord Nityananda for the first time. He was 32 years old at the time and Lord Chaitanya was 20. And then they had a ceremony and the ceremony was to honor Vyasadeva as the author or speaker of the Vedas. So there was a special ceremony. So Nittai was there, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, and Srivas and all of the associates of Lord Chaitanya. And the day before, Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas, uh, do you know the ceremony for worshipping Lord, uh, you know, Vyasadeva? Yes, yes, I have the book. Bring the book tomorrow. And so they came to, they brought the book. And I believe it was still at the house of Nandanacharya, and the ceremony went on. And so then, at one point during the ceremony, Srivas brought the garland over to Lord Nityananda and said, Lord Nityananda, put the garland on Vyasadeva. And so he handed him the garland. And so everything has to be done according to the time. The whole ceremony works in a time schedule. So at that time, the garland has to be placed on, just like we always place Prabhupada's garland right at the beginning. And so uh, he hands it to Nityananda, and Nityananda is standing there with the garland, and Srivas says, put the garland on, Nitai, put the garland on Vyasadeva. <laughs> Shakes his head. <clears throat> and he doesn't move. <laughs> he stands there with the garland. Nitai, put the garland on Vyasadeva. Nothing. <laughs> so then Lord Chaitanya goes over to him and says, Nittai, put the garland on Vyasadeva. <laughs> and Lord Nityananda puts the garland on Lord Chaitanya <laughs> to show who is the real Vyasadeva. <laughs> so he wanted to uh, show that this, yes, this is the person who should be honored <laughs> in this ceremony as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's a very sweet exchange between them. So these are some of the wonderful pastimes of Lord Nityananda, and there are so many, of course, uh, leelas of Lord Nityananda. If you give me a minute, I can think of something else. Anybody can think of one. I can, if you remind me of one of his pastimes, I'll maybe I'll be able to speak a little bit. Anyone? Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Ek uh, Ekka Chakra is 
is still there and devotees go regularly to Ekka Chakra. <clears throat> Ekka Chakra was the same place where the Pandavas stayed for a year in exile. And there's a place there where the Pandavas stayed at one particular house. <clears throat> There's also a story why Lord Nityananda wears one earring, and has, that has a that has a connection with that particular leela in uh, in uh, Ekka Chakra. He has one, he wears an earring on the left side, and there's no earring on the right. I don't know if they have that here. They put earrings on both ears here. Okay, <laughs> but that's one of his leelas. He wears one earring. Ah, uh, let me think. There's so many wonderful stories. I'm just my mind has gone blank. Any help from the anyone? Oh, when they were <laughs> traveling to meet Advaita Charya. That one? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I think I just told that just the other day, <laughs> but I'll tell it again. Who well, I told it on the pastime of the appearance day of Lord Adwaita, Lord Adwaita, where Dwaita Twaracharya was always in the mood of wanting to be worshipped by Lord Chaitanya, but Lord Chaitanya would not worship him. He always saw Dwaita as senior. He was older, he was respectable, and he was a brahmana. And the Lord observed the etiquette and worshipped and honored uh, Dwaita. But Dwaita didn't like that. He, he knew who Lord Chaitanya was. He was the supreme personality of Godhead. And, <clears throat> and so he was thinking of ways to change Lord Chaitanya's attitude so he would you know, be able to worship. So he did something that really got Lord Chaitanya angry. <laughs> he went out and started hearing this uh, this uh, treatise that was describing karma and jnana is superior than bhakti. It was called Yoga Vashishta. And he was going to hear regular discourses from one, you know, sadhu on this on this particular treatise. And the word got back to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya was quite disturbed and actually not only disturbed but angry. So one day he decided to correct Lord Advaita. <laughs> Advaita was at Shantipur and so he said to Lord Nityananda, they were in Navadweep, let's go to Shantipur, we want to give Advaita a visit. <laughs> oh, okay. So they went and they were walking along the Ganga because the Ganga connects Shantipur with Navadweep. If you follow the Ganga you can get to the Shantipur. So and as they were walking, they came to this little hermitage. And in that hermitage, the Lord Chaitanya said, who lives there? Looks like a nice little hermitage. Must be some saintly person. Nityananda said, oh yeah, it's actually a great sannyasi. He lives there. Oh really? Let's take blessings. We can get blessings. Okay, so they went in. And they went, sat down, and then the sannyasi who was there, he was quite elderly, and uh, he, he greeted them. And then Lord Chaitanya thought, well, we should ask, a, when you're with a sannyasi, you don't ask him, hey, how are you, what's happening, man, you know. <laughs> you, you ask him some philosophical question, or some question that could help you in spiritual life, like that. Nowadays, people come to sannyasis. Oh, my, my, my wife won't talk to me. My husband doesn't come back early enough. <laughs> so many problems with family life and what to do. Sannyasis can serve. They can, they can solve all problems because you know on the chest of the sannyasi he has his letter, the big S, which means savior of the world. Yeah. <laughs> But it also means slave or <laughs> other other meanings. So only the sannyasis can save us. 
results anyway. <laughs> That's another thing. But that doesn't minimize the importance of going for advice. So um, please scratch that from the record. <laughs> and so uh, he asked him a question, what is the goal of life? And uh, the goal of life, the sannyasi said, is to eat, drink, and be merry, and be happy. Lord Chaitanya said, well, actually, the goal of life has, is that one should worship the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna in, in devotion. And the sannyasi became a little disturbed. He said, just see, here we are, elderly and experienced in life, and these little babes that just come out of their womb, they're telling us what is the goal of life. And so then Lord Chaitanya wanted to respond, and then Lord Nityananda cut in and said, you know, you know, let's have a little prashadam. <laughs> so, okay, the sannyasi said, oh, yes, it's actually, we have prashadam ready. And he called his wife. He was a, a grihasta sannyasi. <laughs> so he called his wife, and she came out with a, a plate of edibles, and they put it in front of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And Lord Chaitanya said, well, actually, you know, um, hmm. uh, I'm fasting today. I just, just give me a little bit of fruit, that's all. No, well, Sannyasi said, you're our guest. Please take prasadam. And then after a few moments, he said, would you like some bliss? Bliss. <laughs> we all like bliss, right? <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya turned to Lord Dityananda and said, what does he mean by bliss? <laughs> he wants to know if you want some wine, <laughs> some, some spirits, you know, <laughs> in a bottle. And Lord Chaitanya said, let's go. <laughs> so they ran out of the house and jumped into Ganji and Ganges with all their clothes on. And so they would perform their pastimes. When Lord, Ch when Lord Indiananda went to see Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya would, would have his disciples and followers from, from Navadweep every year come to see him at Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya took up residence at Jagannath Puri right after he took sannyas. So one year, Lord Nityananda came and, oh, this is a wonderful pastime. I just remembered this one. And he uh, came to see Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya was happy to see Lord Nityananda because Lord Nityananda was supposed to stay and preach in Navadweep. And Lord Chaitanya would be preaching in uh, Jagannath Puri. But now they were together. Lord Nityananda couldn't bear the separation, so he came. But there was some confidential discussion, and Lord Chaitanya told Lord Nityananda, you know, I'm here and you, you should be there. You know, because we have to, our mission is to spread the holy name, so please take your gopals and go. And go back to Navadweep and preach Krishna consciousness by doing the Harinam Sankirtan. So Lord Nityananda, feeling a little unhappy, but understanding the mission, uh, decided to go. And he took his gopals, he's a cowherd boy, he's in the mood of a cowherd boy. And uh, he took all his gopals and they started to go back to Navadweep. And so when they were leaving, they began kirtan. And they were chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting. And they were going along and they got lost. <laughs> They got absorbed, so absorbed in the chanting and dancing, they didn't know which way they were going. Which way is it to Navadweep? So they start asking some of the villagers. Ah, hi, 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 it's six miles, you go that way, and then you go down that road and you'll get there. Okay. So they got directions, they followed directions, and they were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing. And then they got lost again. It's a good way to get lost. And again, where are we? We don't know. We're supposed to go to Navadweep, but we don't know which way we're going. 
So they asked again. Someone, oh, hi, hi, 20 miles. That way is the Ganga. You follow the Ganga. It takes you right to now. Okay, so they got the directions. Now they were on their way. They followed the Ganga. And then they came to the house of Raghava Pandit just before they reached Navadvi. And Raghava Pandit came out. There's Lord Nityananda with all his disciples. So they came and he greeted him and he brought a beautiful garland. And Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda said, Give me uh, a kadamba garland. I want a ga ga garland made out of kadamba flowers. Nitai, there's no kadamba flowers this time of the season. It's not in season. Nitai said, just go in your backyard and see what you can find. <laughs> so he went back in his backyard, and on the lemon tree, he found kadamba flowers. <laughs> so he picked a kadamba, he was amazed. He picked the Gadamba flowers, made a nice garland, presented to Lord Nityananda. And then everyone started to smell Damanaka flowers. Oh, Damanaka flowers. But where's Damanaka flowers are not in this area, they're only in Jagannath Puri. And Damanaka flowers means Lord Chaitanya, because he always wears a Damanaka garland. So everyone was thinking, is Lord Chaitanya here? We can't see him, but a few people could, because it says wherever Lord Chaitanya is dancing and having kirtan, Lord Nityananda is dancing and having kirtan, Lord Chaitanya is always there. <laughs> He's always there. So he was there in his unmanifested form. So then they continued to have kirtan, and then that kirtan went on for three months. <laughs> three full months, the, the kirtan went on. It went on and on and on, and the place went mad. <laughs> uh, nobody took prasadam, nobody ate, nobody drank, nobody slept. They just had kirtan for three months. And it's described, Jai Pataka Maharaj describes this, this pastime in detail. It's really amazing when he speaks this pastime. I can't remember all the details, but it's described that they were running up the side of trees, running up the side of trees, out onto the branches, dancing on the twigs, the very end of the branches, and the twigs weren't breaking. <laughs> and they were diving off the, tr the trees. One, one devotee said, I am Angada, the monkey soldier. Choom! And he would dive off the tree and float into the air, down to the ground. They were weightless. <laughs> the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamandir defies all material laws and brings one to another realm of existence. And so, and then the devotees went mad and start picking out trees from the ground and dancing with the trees, <laughs> little trees. And then the, the villagers, they, were, they came and they, thank you for coming, Marge. Hare Krishna. And they, they, uh, Maharaj is giving class tonight. And then, uh, yeah, so they were picking up trees and dancing. With, and then some of the villagers, they joined and they were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and chanting. And this went on, and they were dancing for one month. And some of these little kids from the village, they were grabbing trees and pulling them out of the ground and dancing with the trees. It was a mad kirtan. Lord Nityananda's kirtan cannot be described in any words. It is simply not part of this world. So that went on for three months. Finally, they arrived in Navadweep. And... When, when Lord J. Nityananda got to Navadvi, one very wealthy person wanted to give some gifts to Lord Nityananda. So he gave him crown, jewelry, ankle bells, ankle bells, ankle bracelets, and various types of ornaments, all made out of silver and gold. Really, really valuable. And Lord Nityananda put them on. And he was doing kirtan with all of these nice jewelry in the streets of Navadweep. And this was going on every day. Finally, one thief, he said, hmm, he called his fellow thieves. He said, look at this. You see that? Everything we want is in one place. <laughs> we can retire after this one. 
So uh, yeah, let's let's make a plan. So okay, so one day, so they found out that Lord Nityananda was staying every night at the house of Jagadish Pandit. So they decided, <clears throat> okay, so they were waiting, and they were going to attack Lord Nityananda. So they had gotten, said each Dakoi had about five different weapons, and they were all waiting till it got dark, and it started getting darker and darker and darker. But then it got so dark, they all fell asleep, <laughs> including the leader. And then they woke up, and the rooster was was crowing. That's pretty bad. Uh, 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 uh. Is that a little better? Anybody can do it. Any 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 expert roosters out there? Huh? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, you got the job. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it makes the pastime more exciting. We've got a real live rooster here. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> everybody woke up and they, they looked at each other. What happened? You fell asleep. No, you fell asleep. It was your fault. You fell asleep. You fell asleep. So they were blaming each other.